I'm just going to go into some brief common physics misconceptions now. First thing I will say is the differences between apparent weightlessness and true weightlessness. Just to get to know, apparent weightlessness is when net force is zero. You feel like you're weightless because there's nothing pushing up on you, but you're not actually weightless. Reason being, weight is a force of gravity. And even if you're orbiting the Earth, for example, gravity is still acting on you. In fact, gravity is the centripetal force which is making you orbit the Earth in uniform circular motion. Apparent weightlessness is uh, distinct from true weightlessness. True weightlessness is when you don't have a gravitational force, and that can only occur when you're very, very far away from a large object because two objects always have a gravitational force towards each other. That's the second thing. Two objects always have gravitational forces to e towards each other, like even my glasses and my calculator, for example. They're just so small uh, on, on this scale. If you sub it into the formula, the gravitational uh, force formula, you'll see that it's a tiny force. So uh, that's forces present. You have to understand it, but it's so small that it won't affect uh, it won't make them move together. Uh, the next thing I will say is reaction forces. And reaction forces are things that uh, people confuse a lot. And when I have, for example, uh, I will say actually that the reaction force uh, is some, the, the two reaction forces, but by reaction force, I mean Newton's third law. Uh, an action force and its reaction force have to be the same type of force. For example, if my calculator on my table, Gravity is acting downwards. The reaction force is gravity acting upwards of the calculator on Earth. It's not the normal force from the table because the normal force is not the same type of force as a gravitational force. Uh, the reason why, obviously, uh, Earth isn't really gravitating towards this is because the force this applies on the Earth is so small because of the formula that you know so that's again an example of a worded question you might have to bring in your concept you might have to apply it to your situation and then you might have to answer your question and you can have a formula in that middle section great uh, the next thing is uh, net force so net force is uh, external force what i mean by that is uh, you can look at different systems so if you have a car uh, pulling a uh, trailer, uh, you, you can look at the entire system and look at all the external forces acting upon that. And in that case, a tow bar wouldn't be part of that net force. But if you were just considering the ute or the car as the system, then the tow bar would be a force, a retarding force in the opposite direction of the direction of travel. Uh, so you have to, you can look at different systems in general. When you look at a, uh, a, a an entire system involving both the car and the trailer, you're considering acceleration because acceleration is constant for both the car and the trailer. So that's how you work out acceleration by treating the car and the trailer as one system. In order to work out force, what you do is you take the car by itself, and it'll it'll usually be, for example, work out the driving force of the car. Then you work once you have the acceleration of that car then you can work out driving force using F net on the car is equal to MA. Uh, next thing is that, yeah, and also a net force isn't a force technically, it's just the summation of forces. So if you draw the forces off an object and then you add them together using vector sums, you'll get that net force. Uh, yeah, also keep in mind that the net force is therefore always in the same direction as acceleration, but acceleration is not uh, the same as velocity in that when you have acceleration is equal to zero that doesn't mean that the velocity is zero classic example is when you have a spring and a mass on a spring and it's oscillating up and down and up and down at the bottom of its oscillation its acceleration uh, is upwards but its velocity is zero velocity is zero when it changes direction that's something we also keep in mind velocity is zero when it changes direction but its acceleration is still in the upwards direction which is what makes it uh, keep oscillating so keep in mind that velocity and acceleration are distinct 
Great. Uh, the next thing I was going to talk about is Suvat equations. Firstly, they are for constant acceleration. Second thing, have them memorized. Third thing, v squared equals u squared plus 2as. I'm not sure if you notice, it's not really something that covered that much, but v squared equals u squared plus 2as is actually an energy equation. If you equal mgh, which is gravitation, gravitational energy, potential energy, and you make that equal to uh, kinetic energy, uh, half mv squared, and you cancel things out, and then you rearrange it, or you'll get v squared equals u squared equals 2as. v squared equals u squared plus 2as, sorry. So keep in mind that that represents gravitational force being converted to kinetic energy, not gravitational force, gravitational energy being converted to kinetic energy, for example, when you drop a, a projectile, or you drop a ball, or you launch a projectile. Next thing to keep in mind is that projectiles, and I'm just going through this in the spot because I've taught this a lot and uh, a lot of points keep coming up. Uh, projectiles uh, have uh, projectiles. When you launch a non horizontal projectile, uh, your horizontal velocity is constant unless you have air resistance. Vertical velocity. You can use a Suvat equations because acceleration is generally constant, and that's g. Talk about air resistance now. Air resistance is dependent upon a couple of things. The faster you go, the more air resistance you have. The greater surface area you have, so if you're dropping a piece of paper, the more air resistance, the more upward drag you have. Air resistance is always in the direction opposite that of the motion. So. Just keep that in mind. If the ball is going in this direction, air resistance is going in that direction. Cool. Next up is in relation to perpendiculars. Uh, when you when you apply a force uh, to something, it doesn't have to be applied directly in the in. For example, if I have my calculator on the table and I apply a force, it doesn't have to be applied directly parallel to the direction of motion. If I apply it in a uh, Diagonal direction, you'll still get force, so you need to remember to resolve that force. That's the basis behind incli inclined planes and forces and F uh, mg sine theta and all that. Just keep in mind that there will be no f motion when uh, force is perpendicular to the direction of motion. So that's only when it's completely perpendicular, when there is any sort of component of the force that is not perpendicular to the direction of motion, there will still be some force. And that's similar with torque. Uh, torque equals F times R, but it's actually equal to the force that is perpendicular to the uh, radius. So even if I have a radius here, and it's like rotating about my, el about my electronon, about my elbow, uh, what you will still have is, uh, as long as there's a force that's not completely perpendicular like this, even if it's like this, there's still a component that is perpendicular because remember direction of motion is like in this direction. So uh, there's still a, if there's still a component uh, that is in this direction, then there, will, there is still torque, a bit uh, greatly reduced. Cool. Uh, so those are some of the most common misconceptions I had in across motion. Uh, I feel like photoelectric effect those are more like content based, a little bit less opportunity for silly mistakes and silly misconceptions like that. There's less equations and less formulas for that. Uh, but keep in mind that they are important as well. Get to know the differences between diffraction, diffraction and interference. That's very important. And also between the differences between light and particle models. But other, other than that, that's all I have for today. Hope you've got something out of that and good luck for your physics exam. And also feel free to leave a comment down below or uh, drop a like or subscribe to my channel because I'll be producing, I guess, more less impromptu videos like this and more uh, nicely rounded videos. Uh, but I feel like I do sometimes ramble. At the same time, there was quite a bit of uh, 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 high yield content in that, I think. So please stay subscribed and good luck.